So uh, we're group 33, and we did a pneumatic paddle shifter for the uh, Volkswagen transmission. So this is a 59 through 68 Volkswagen transmission. And how it shifts is there's these three little uh, shift forks, and when you push it in, that's in a gear. And then when you pull all the way out, that's in the next gear. So that's like one is all the way in, two is all the way out, neutral, is right there and then this would be three and four and then one of these only moves one direction and so that's reverse. So how that's shifted is there's a little arm in here and uh, turn it on. We're going to turn it on without air really quickly. Um, so you can see in there that there's an arm um, and that moves up and down and in and out and that would normally be attached to your uh, shift arm or your uh, shifter and there's a big long linkage because this sits in the back of your vehicle and the shifter's at the front and it's really hard to be very precise. I mean this was a 50s, 60s car, it was not meant to be precise so we decided to make something that would shift it very fast and very efficiently. So we're going to turn on the air um, and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to boot up and then it's going to cycle through a automated automated sequence that makes sure it is in first so it will go through all the possibilities to make sure that it can't get stuck in a gear so so that means it's in first um, so we have four solenoids um, and they're controlled by four relays. Everything is runoff picks. We have three picks. Um, one is controlling the clutch, one is controlling the other four, four solenoids, and one is controlling the uh, shift light. So when we hit up, it puts the clutch in, it waits for it to sense that this is pressed, this limit switch is pressed, it then shifts into gear, and once it's in gear, it releases the clutch. So. That was in the third, that was fourth, oh, that was fourth. Um, and so then you'd go back. So it'd be third, is that second? That's second. That's second. That's second. I can't see the screen right now. It's first. First. And then so when you go in the reverse, there's a, um, another solenoid that has to be removed, a reverse lockout. So it has to go away from it, and then it pulls it in, and then it goes all the way in the reverse. So. So that's reverse. And then um, going back in the first, it's the same thing. It has to go all the way away. Oh. So, um, and then we also added a speed sensor. So we call this valet mode. You can adjust what speed it does this at. Um, and if you wanted to, you could turn it way down so no one can rev your vehicle over, let's say, thousand RPM, but at a certain RPM, it shifts. So that's to make sure that it automatically shifts at a certain RPM. You could also set that at your red line, um, and it would automatically shift just at the best time for you if you're just accelerating. Okay, so there's first. This is our clutch system, so what we did is this is actually an e-brake, uh, handbrake, um, and we, it's a, just a hydraulic system, so we just put a pneumatic cylinder on it instead of having a handle, um, and then this would go in line with the foot clutch, so you can choose to use either your foot or this will do it automatically. Um, one advantage to that is our system automatically starts in first, so when you start the car and you don't want to go immediately, you want to hold the clutch in. Or, um, like, if you want to skip a gear, you have to hit the press and hit the button twice, um, but you would just not initiate into that middle gear. Um, this stuff is all 
can't hold this. Is all how we move this rod here. So this guy is the rod that would usually go up there to the front of the vehicle. Um, this does our in out. This guy is a rotation. Um, so it's sitting on a pin and it can rotate and it turns that rod. Um, and then over here we have another tiny solenoid and this is our rotational stop is what we call it. So what that does is when you look at this, there's three different positions that you have to go to when you rotate. And pneumatics have all the way on or all the way off. So what we did was we put a stop at that reverse so that we can go from like the third and fourth position to the first and second position and not having to go all the way into reverse because that would be bad. On a car and uh, off-roading guys can do this. You take the AC compressor and you oil it and you don't have to hook it up, you don't run Freon through it. You basically just use it as a compressor. Um, and so the plan for this was to use the existing AC compressor that would be on the engine um, in this vehicle. It's, a, it's not the stock Volkswagen engine. And uh, run an oiler like for an air compressor system and you just have your own high pressure air system that you'd regulate down to use on this. So. Um. This whole thing right now is powered by just this wall outlet thing. It's just like a laptop charger. Um, and we just soldered a port in there that works with it. Here's our regulator. So it takes it down from a 12 volt system to a five volt system with a common ground. Um, and this actually has a surge protector in it as well. Um, and it's adjustable. So we could, we actually had to adjust it every time we hooked up something else. We had to turn it again down to five volts. Um, we have three picks, one is running this, one is running these guys, and the other one is running the clutch. And like he explained earlier, they communicate with each other to say, okay, the clutch is actually in, now you can shift, we're done shifting, you can take the clutch out. Um, each one of these solenoids is run by a relay, which is connected to the picks. So our, our five volt and our 12 volt systems are isolated through, that, through the relays. So the sound is um, literally when this button is pressed. Um, it, so that's saying that the, the clutch is in. So okay. the beeping means don't press anything because you're shifting right now. And if you press buttons, bad things will happen. So this is just our shift pattern. It's actually a reverse shift pattern because we're looking at it backwards in this um, compared to if we were looking at that. Um, but um, yeah, we just etched our shift pattern into this plexiglass for presentation purposes. The, uh, the whole setup here, so the uh, back parts of this was done on the mill to get all these holes in line. Um, afterwards, we sandblasted and powder coated all these white parts. Um, that was just for finish purposes. Um, everything uh, is oiled in here. And then we have, these are rubber bump stops on this in and out. Um, so that. So these are rubber bump stops it's to give it a little bit of cushion when it's going into gear. Um, so you're not hurting the internals of the transmission through the shift forks.